So hello everyone, this is our 10th video, so that's kind of exciting. Um, I'm going to be going over some chapter 6 uh, review questions um, in this video today. We're going to start with number 1, parts A and C, uh, then number 5, and finally number 7. So that should cover um, most of the topics of the chapter, if not all. Let's look at question number 1. It is a question where we are to graph each inequality and justify the boundary and the half plane that you shaded. So um, for these kind of questions, what we want to do is to start with the associated equation. In this case, I have 6x plus y equals to 12. And with equation of this form, what we usually want to do is let x equal 0 to find the y-intercept, and then let y equal 0 to find the x-intercept. So if I let x equal 0, y is going to be equal to 12. And then if I let y equals 0, x is going to be equal to, well, 6x is going to be equal to 12, so x is going to be equal to 2. So this gives us the points uh, 0, 12, and uh, 2, 0. So, in this case, the point 2, 0 is going to be right here. I'm going to go up by 2s uh, for every square. And the point 0, 12 will be somewhere up here. Okay. And since our inequality does not include the boundary itself, okay, this will be a dashed line. I'm just going to go ahead and draw that in. There we go. And the second part of this is to test a point. So I'm going to go ahead and test uh, 0, 0. And again, I can do this whenever the line does not go through 0, 0 itself. So in this case, um, I'll have 6 times 0 plus 0. And it's supposed to be greater than 12, and which is not the case. So 0 is not greater than 12. So instead of shading the side that has 0, 0 on it, I'm actually going to shade in the opposite side. However, um, the fact that both the domain and range is integer means that I have dot in my solution. So I'm going to go ahead and use dots here. And once again, uh, for the purpose of test or quiz, you don't really need to dot in absolutely everything you know just a little bit of it will be good and then you can just write um, dot it that will be okay but, yeah so that's for question 1a for question 1c is it is a little bit different as I continue to finish the dots there what we have in this case is not like the first question where x and y are on the same side. As a matter of fact, I actually just have negative 7y equals to 14 for my associated equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let um, y equal 0. Well, that doesn't work because then I have 0 equals to 14. That doesn't get me anywhere. So more or less, what's going to happen is instead, um, I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 7. And I get y is equal to negative 2. So this is actually just going to be a um, horizontal line. at y equals negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. This time I do want a solid line because it is greater than or equal to. Go ahead and draw that in. And once again, I'm going to test the point 0, 0 because the line does not go through 0, 0, which is convenient. Okay, So I have uh, negative 7 times 0 and it's supposed to be greater than or equal to 14, and that's clearly not the case. Okay, so what I'll end up doing is shading the side that's opposite the 0, 0. 
So here's zero, zero. I'm going to be shading in this side here. And notice that it is real numbers for the domain and range. So I will be shading with a highlighter. So on the test, what you can do is you can simply uh, shade in the area with your uh, pencil. And that's all you need to do. So we'll move on to question number five. Replacing the ropes on a boat. Okay. No more than 50 meters for um, halyards and no more than 120 meters all together. So we're going to set up our variables H for the first type of rope and the uh, variable S for the second type of rope. So part A is interested in what are the restrictions on the variables. Okay, So in this case, both H and S are going to be real numbers. And the reason for that is um, they are measurements of length, and length is continuous. Okay. So that's the justification on why it's supposed to be real numbers. The second restriction is that they must be greater than or equal to zero. And the reason is you cannot have a negative length. Okay. Part B, it says to create a graphical model of this situation and use it to choose two possible combinations of lengths of rope. So in order for us to do that, we need to first set up our inequalities, and there will be two of them. Uh, the first one is that H must be less than or equal to 50. And the second inequality is that H plus S must be less than or equal to uh, 120. Okay. So for us to graph these, this is actually pretty easy because um, if I were to set up my variable h here and my variable s as a vertical axis, then what I'll have is uh, a vertical line okay, because the associated equation will be h equals 50 and that will be vertical. Okay, so go ahead and draw that in. And for the second line, um, I have h plus s is equal to 120. So that will give us the intercept 120, 0, and 0, 120. And here we are. Go ahead and draw that in as well. Of course, I'm going to use solid line for both of these inequalities because they are um, less than or equal to in both cases. And then I'm going to go ahead and test points. So for these two inequalities, I can test the point 0, 0. Okay, because neither of these lines cross the point 0, 0. For the first inequality, h is less than or equal to 50. If I test 0, 0, I can see that 0 is indeed less than 50. So I'm going to shade on the left-hand side of this line here. And then for my second inequality, I'll have h plus s less than or equal to 120. So 0 plus 0 is indeed less than 120. I'll shade below this line as well. The common area then is going to be right here. Okay. So I can choose any two combinations of ropes inside of this area. For the sake of uh, simplicity, um, we're most likely going to choose whole number. But of course, real number answers are valid as well. You can have root 2 and something along those lines if you like. OK. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go with the solutions. I don't know, forty and fifty. So h equals forty, s equals fifty, or a solution like uh, twenty and ninety. Okay. That's it for number five. So moving on to question number seven. It is about a pet store that specializes in birds. So it says that at least three times more male birds are sold uh, than female birds. And in that last two weeks, uh, no more than 28 birds are sold in total. And it goes on to say that male birds are sold for $115 each and female birds were sold for $90 each. The first thing that we need to do is to set up our two variables. Okay, I'm going to go with M for male and F for female. Okay. And then um, the domain and range will both be whole numbers because um, we cannot have a negative number of birds and we cannot have a um, part of a bird. So what we're going to do after that is to set up our constraints. In this case, there will be um, two constraints. The first constraint is that um, the number of male birds sold is more than three times the number of female birds sold. The second constraint is that there is no more than 28 birds sold in total. So these are two constraints. I'm going to let the horizontal axis be male and the vertical axis be uh, female. Okay. So now I need to graph each one of these. I'm going to set up the associated equation for each one. So I have m equals 3f. So of course, as a uh, slope-intercept form, I'm going to divide both sides by 3, so that f is equal to 1 third m. So here is um, 0, 0, the, um, the f-intercept, if you will. And the slope is going to be 1 third. So up one space, over three spaces, and so forth. Go ahead and draw my line. Okay. And it's going to be a solid line once again. For the second one, the associated equation is going to be m plus f is equal to 28. So again, you can determine that the two intercepts you will have are 28 and 0, as well as 0 and 28. So it's going to end up at this point and this point and you can go ahead and draw that line in as well okay. so and then what we're going to do is um, test points for the first inequality I cannot test a zero zero so I'm going to go ahead and test four zero instead so I have m is greater than or equal to 3 times f, if I have 4, and see if it's greater than 3 times 0, well 4 is greater than 0, so that's true, so I'm going to shade in this side of the first line. For the second line, I can actually test 0, 0, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, so m plus f is less than or equal to 28, so 0 plus 0 is going to be less than or equal to 28, and that's true, so I can shade in the side of the line that's over here. But actually I'm going to end up dotting because the solution set is supposed to be whole numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So your solution set will look something like that. Okay. And finally ask for the combination that would have maximized the pet store's revenue. Um, you obviously want to sell as many of the male birds as you can possibly sell. So 
you have three corners, one here, one here, and one here. And the only one that really maxes, maximizes the number of male birds sold is this one right here. So we're going to sell 28 male birds and zero female birds. They can look at the objective function, which would have been R equals to 115M plus 90F. I will plug in 28 and 0, which will give me the maximum revenue. And that's going to be... Uh, three thousand two hundred and twenty dollars and so that's the end of the video if you have any further questions please do leave a comment below or email me directly uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can uh, the test is going to be on Monday uh, so, so everybody is aware of that and uh, please subscribe okay bye